Hey, Jamie. Hey, Linda. I'm trying to make a little space here. I have had quite the last week. Thank you for that sound check, Jamie. Appreciate that. Ooh, let's see. <laughs> live. Oh, let me, before we... Hey Sandra, let's go over and take a peep at the calendar real quick. I know that we were supposed to have a supporter file on Friday, however I have had numerous, 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 as have some of you, uh, design space issues. They are working on it. I did talk to uh, support, um, and hopefully they'll get it straightened out soon. Uh, hi, Bonnie. Anyway, I finally, this afternoon, or this evening, I should say, completed Friday's project. It was not that difficult of a project. It's just that I couldn't get to Design Space to cooperate with me. Hi, Marianne. So that is one of the reasons why it's late and for the fact that I have to redone all of the design space videos this month. So far I think I'm at 37 videos for the month. <laughs> so that's a lot of editing. Uh, that's what takes all the time. So, But the new videos are out. You have your laptop and PC series that came out um, I think the second week and we have this last week did our joy video that somebody asked me to do on the app and we have also done a iPad or iOS series for my mobile users. I did not do an Android series guys. Um, there's just not that much difference between the Android and the other mobile apps other than the fact that Android is extremely limited and doesn't have all of those features. Um, so I did not do an Android app. I don't have a device to do one on. So I, I, if you're an Android user, I'm sorry, but I just don't have the ability to do that for you. Hi, Shirley. But we've got some other things coming to you guys. Um, I am going to finish up tonight that File. Let me pop over and show you really quick what I've been working on. Um, this is a little file I've been, you can see I've been playing. These are my mock-ups. Um, I did two versions, one where it would have an envelope on the front. This one would just have to glue a little note card or something on there. I'm trying to figure out a way to, what I did, this one is to hold a gift card in your candy, okay? And it's for all my air users. And things like that but I wanted to do something for my maker users and I did this and I'll just go ahead and punch it out with a perforation so that they could peel that perforation out and get to the can well if I can peel it and get to the candy um, but there's no way for me to put the note card on there and I just can't make it look right I've even done some little Nouveau drops to do the glue flap, and then the back has the envelope sealed at the back with their name and stuff. You can see I've been handwriting on this one, um, but that's what I'm working on. And if I can't figure out a way to get that perforation to work, I, I'm just going to leave it in the file, and you guys can figure out what you want to put above the heart on that one. But that will be coming out tonight. I will do a cute um, 
quick little video tutorial on how it goes together for you and what to do and what not to do on that uh, because if you do the perforation you've only got one shot to get your candy in there before you seal it up so I'll make sure that I mention all of that in that video we are supposed to do and I hope you guys can forgive me <laughs> we are supposed to do right here on the 29th I still have to do Wednesday's file, which I will work on that tonight after I do that video and get it posted for you guys. I will work on Wednesday's file and that video and get that out on Wednesday to get me back on track as long as Design Space cooperates with me. Because of my Design Space issues, I am going to have to move this Escal video, which is not on here. It was tentative anyway. Uh, and I told you guys that we are going to be doing the Shortcuts A Lot videos. And we are uh, on those off days from the files. We are going to be doing those. But I'm not going to put them on the schedule until February. That's going to give me a chance to get caught up. So if you guys can just bear with me during this revamp. I am reworking the group resource guide and separating it out. Your cheat sheets from the resources from the other stuff. Um, so, and we're going to be putting that on the website so that you guys have a quick link to it. And there is, bam, if you're looking for a heat press or an easy press, it's on that tab if, under the resources. You just go to heat presses and it will be there. If you're looking for shirts, you're going to click on the shirts or blanks or whatever we decide to make that. And you're going to go there and everything that we have on that's going to be there. It's just taking me some time. So I will get the file out for the little envelope box tonight. I will get your Wednesday file out and then we will be live again on Monday and that's going to put us back on track and during sometime during that week we will do a Shortcuts A Lot live. Okay so I appreciate you guys bearing with me this month. There's been a lot coming out this month and um, if you guys go and take a look at the new Design Space videos you'll see that. Before we put this card together, I do want to go over to Design Space. Um, ba, 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 let's see. There we are. And I want to cover a couple of tips and tricks. Now, I did a little quick video for somebody yesterday that was having a problem trying to figure something out. And I wanted to show that to you along with a couple of tips and tricks that I've just never revealed to anybody. I just didn't think anybody would be interested. But then I thought, why not? Why not go ahead and tell everybody my little shortcut things that I have found in Design Space? And right now I am in the classic view because the new view was giving me a lot of issues. Um, the classic view was just giving me a few issues. <laughs> so um, that's where we're at. So yesterday I was asked, how can we put like the thumb hole cards in something? And I know I've covered that before. And I showed her a quick way yesterday. I'm just going to grab a square here. I'm just going to do it the old-fashioned way before I show you guys my tricks. Um, and let's say you wanted a, a little curved arch thumb hole to hold your gift card or a business card. There are a couple of ways of doing it. And one way... It, that I like to do it is go to text and type a capital C or you can type a lowercase c uh, just in case that the uppercase doesn't work for you guys and then I go and I change that to draw but I want to change my writing style to write and that gives me that little arch okay another way that you can do that and they're both almost the same if you want it more rounded um, the, it's, you can't really do it with the letter. This is just the quick way. But after I do that, I come up and change that to cut after I put it on a writing style. And I'm just going to ungroup to letters. But when you do that, if you look over in the layers panel, it says cut and print. I don't want to do that. I'm going to get rid of the little one. We're just going to use the big one. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And then I am going to come up and change that to no fill. And now you can see that it changed that draw to a cut. Oh, duh. That was me. That was not them. That was me. 
Well, no, it changed on me. I was over there and it changed. Why did it change? That is just weird why it does that. I don't... I don't know why it does that, guys. Um, let's go back. Okay, so I have my square and let's... Let me take that out. I'm going to go to text. And I'm going to try to watch. I have two monitors, so I have, and they're side by side, but I'm watching what I'm doing on this screen. And I'm not really paying attention to the other four windows in the other one. <laughs> so, it, yeah, it just switched over all on its own. I don't know why. Uh, the, I have to, I'm going to research. Let me, as a matter of fact, you guys give me a second and let me research why it's doing that. Make myself a note so I don't forget why the swap is auto. There's something I'm doing in Design Space on this screen that's causing it. It did it when I typed my C. Okay, I'm going to watch, and if it doesn't, I'm going to do it again. So I've got my Cricut, just my Cricut Sans font, and it's on writing. And I'm going to go to text and type that capital C, and it did it. That's what did it. There's something about shift C. <gasps> ah, it is me. I'm going to show you guys. <laughs> I have a shortcut key. Guess what that shortcut key is? <laughs> ah, I just figured it out. I'm going to show it to you guys. Give me just a second. <laughs> I just realized it is me. Yep, that it is. Um, let me let me grab that. Now that I think about it, that's actually I know it's not funny for you guys, but it's funny for me guys. <laughs> I have like several windows open and these are my keys to go from our splash screen to the intro video to our ads and to take us to the calendar <laughs> so when I hit that shift C guess where it takes us <laughs> so <gasps> my bad <laughs> I will fix it I created it I can fix it. <laughs> Sorry, I won't type that C again. I'll take all those shortcuts out. I don't need them. I don't even use them anymore. <laughs> They're old. They've been in there forever. Sorry. Anyway, type your C in there and put it on writing and change it from draw because if it's on draw, you don't want that. You want to put it on cut. But when you change it to cut, if you look at the layers panel, it went from draw to print and cut, okay, because I had it in writing style. So next I need to go over and change my line type back to cut. And, or I'm sorry, take that off a of no fill and it will go to cut, okay? And then you can bring that over, depending on how high you want that, you can set that on your card. You're just going to duplicate it and then you're going to flip the other one. And then if your card is a, let me put that on. Let's say this is your card, and then this is your gift card. We'll make our gift card blue. Our gift cards are, somebody refresh my memory, uh, 3.375 by 2.125. But no, yeah, business card is three and a half by two. I don't remember. I don't know. But anyway, you would want to set those. I'm going to arrange and move my business card to the back or my gift card. You're going to set those right at the edge or just past the edge of your gift card. Okay. And then let me bring that one forward too. Same thing here. You might need it, depending on what letter or what alphabet you use, you may have to rotate them a little bit. But once you've got them set just past right where you want them, then you can delete that, select the two, 
align center horizontally, attach, and then you can attach those to your card and that's going to create those cutouts where it stays in there but you, and you can flip them back to hold your card in. Okay? So that's one way and that's what I showed yesterday. There are other ways and I, I tend to use the others because you can tell this one's not a complete semicircle. It's past the semicircle, you know, and if you skew it, it's still not quite a semicircle. So how do you get the semicircle? Before I show you that, because I'm going to use that, notice that my mouse is in the middle of this. There are shortcut keys to shapes, guys. Did you know that? Because if I press 1 on my keyboard, my square comes up. If I press 2, I get my circle. If I press 3, I get my triangle. 4, I get my diamond. 5, I'm going to get my pentagon, 5 sides. 6, I'm going to get my hexagon, 6 sides. 7, I'm going to get my star. 8, I'm going to get my octagon. And 9, I'm going to get my heart. How cool is that? So you can just press your keys. You don't have to do all of that stuff. So if I wanted um, a heart and a square, I would just press 19 on my keyboard and bring them up. Okay? If I wanted a circle and a square, 21 or 12. And that will bring those up. I have not discovered what brings up the score line. You still have to go over to shapes and grab it. Zero does not work. Zero does nothing. Um, I haven't quite figured out how to get the score line on a shortcut yet. But that is a quick, easy way um, for you guys to get your shapes. So if I want two circles, I'm just going to press 22 and get me two circles. How cool is that? How many of you knew that? How many of you didn't? I never see anybody talk about it, so I wasn't sure if anybody knew. And yes, I'm sorry, I had to have a little sip of coffee. It does work in the new canvas still. I did check it. So it does work in the new canvas. They didn't destroy that. Yeah, and that's to me that's so much easier than clicking that and having shapes open up and then clicking on the shape and then clicking the shape and clicking the shape or duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. It's much easier just to um, use your keyboard, use your, your, your numeric keypad and just type it in. See, guys, you, I taught somebody something new today. I'm so excited. <laughs> So, let, we have our two circles. Now you still have to manually size them. So, sorry, I can't help you on that. But you can use your up and down arrows to move them. But I think everybody knew that, your up and down arrows. And if you click on your canvas, you can. Well, sometimes it works. It might work in the new canvas. My arrows were working. They're not working on the old canvas anymore. Maybe on the new canvas they still do. So how do I get a half circle for that? And I'm not through showing you guys tips. I'm going to show you a couple more that you may not know. Um, you can come in here and let's say I wanted a one inch semicircle. Okay, so I made that one one inch. I'm going to make this one 0 0.90 or 0.95. Let's go 95. So it's just slightly smaller than the other one. I'm going to select them both, I'm going to line, center, and I am going to slice. I'm going to pull those apart, get rid of all my trash. And now I can insert a square by pressing the number one, bringing it halfway up. Let's just get this guy centered. And guys, I'm using my crosshairs here to put that on, a, on the grid line so I know where center is. And then I'm just going to select them both and slice it. 
and you saw how thin, let me just bring that back, you see how thin that is on that cut right there? So that's almost just like a singular cut line, okay? And now you have your semicircle that you can place onto, look, let's see, a line, oops. You can do a couple of things, center them horizontally. Let's just say that I've already spaced them out and I know that's where they're going to be. I'm going to weld those together. Now I can simply attach them and it will cut out, okay? Because attach is going to be the same thing as slice in this case. I'm going to undo. Oops. Undo and redo. Eh, it didn't redo. Let me align them again. And weld. Or I can slice them. Can't slice with attached. Forgot I was attached there. Detach. Remember two layers. That's a layer. This is a layer. Nothing grouped, nothing attached. And I can slice that out. So I can either slice it or attach it, and it's still going to give me that. It's just going to give me a little bit of space in between it where using the cut line won't. Okay? So if you want a little space, you want to do it that way. Cut line, you want to do it this way. What key do you use to keep your letters in line when moving them closer? If you want to keep them in line vertically and horizontally, because we don't have the grid lines like we do on the iPad, it's the shift key. However, it is not working in the new canvas. It is only working in the classic canvas. We have, guys, they're working on it. And it is frustrating because I got extremely frustrated. I, 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 I got infuriated because I was so much under pressure trying to get things done. And I was just infuriated with design space. We, we're going to have to choose the lesser of two evils. Okay? That's what it's going to come down to until they get it fixed. You can pick new canvas and have that teeny tiny grid that you can't do anything about, but it gives you the ability to copy and paste from one um, window to another should something happen like you can't save. But you've got to put up with the, the disappearing uh, handles on your objects. You've got to... These are just some of the issues that I have had. Um, the disappearing handles or not being able to size. You can unlock it, but when you size it, it won't size. It's still sized proportionately, even though it's unlocked up here. And if you type in three inches, it reverts back to what it was or it changes it altogether to something different than what you put on there. And that's happening to me in the new canvas as well. If I switch to the old canvas, which I did, and I've tried to save, it's, it's really hard to remember to insert a circle and save, slice and save, move something and save, weld something and save. But that's what I have to do. Okay? If, you, if you're in the classic canvas, I'm just going to tell you to do that. Because, I mean, I made about five moves, ten moves maybe, and then I went to save. And not only did it not save, but it I had saved maybe ten moves before that, and it reverted and removed that save. <laughs> and took me back to where I picked up, where I left off and opened my project. Even though I got the blue bar and it said it saved, it reverted back. So it's the lesser of two evils right now. And I have done everything. I have done my app cache and deleted it several times. Done that. It helped for a, I don't know, in 30 minutes maybe. And then it didn't work anymore. Um, I've had to go back and completely remove design space off of my computer, put it in the trash, 
empty the trash, shut my computer down, restart my computer, reinstall Design Space. Works for a little bit, stops working. And I probably did that a total of eight to ten times this week only. So you've got to pick the lesser of two evils until they get this fixed. Okay, they know there's a problem. I spoke to them today. They know there's an issue. Everybody's having issues. I don't know why they don't roll it back until they get it fixed, but, you know, we just have to do what we can do. Yes, we talked about that last week. Uh, Shirley said something about the copy and paste from the new canvas to the old. And I... And it worked on screen. You guys saw it work on screen. It's a hit and miss because I closed everything out and then I went back to do it again. And it pasted, but it pasted what I had saved while I was in the new canvas. You have to be in the new canvas to even get it to copy. And then if you switch over when you paste, it's going to be whatever you did. It would not let me open a new canvas and then get a new object. I tried that and then went and did it, and it wouldn't work. So it's going to be hit and miss if you can get that to work for you. Okay? So I'm, I'm just going to say, save, 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 save. Make a move, save. Slice something, save. In, insert an object, save. No... I'm serious. I know it's painful, but we have to save after every single step or you're going to be caught like I was earlier sitting there in a puddle saying, okay, great. Now I've lost the entire project and I have to start over. Um, so just bear with us, bear with the, everything. It's going to work out. And I know that's easier said than done because I lost my, um, composure with it today as well. I mean, I just literally sat here and cried because I couldn't get my design space to work properly. <laughs> and it just kept putting me further and further behind. So, I mean, just do what you can do with it, you know? Hopefully something's coming quick. No, we are not all crazy, Joyce. We are not. It, it and it, it didn't seem to matter what canvas I was in. There's an issue in either one that I use. And personally, I don't know. I'm not an IT person. Personally, I think that the new canvas is having a clash with the classic canvas. They don't like each other. It's like a cat and a dog. They don't want to be in the same program together. And, you know, they need to pick one. Pick one. Pick the new, pick the old. But pick one and get rid of the other one and fix whatever's wrong with the one they pick. Um, but that's just my opinion. So, but everybody's having issues. There's not a whole lot we can do other than call support. See if they've got a fix for you, some feedback. They did offer me the beta version um, that, that came out before that. But I don't know how well that's going to work. I don't know if it's going to force me to update every time I try to open it. So... I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. So, I'll see. I'll see if it works. But it, I can't, I, I mean, I was having all sorts of crazy issues. Uh, when I insert a line, if I, I don't know if I'm going to have them this time or not. We're going to see if I can even insert a line. <laughs> there we go. And it did three. I have no... I have no handle. <laughs> and here's my issue with that. I mean, yeah, there's you, there's a workaround. There is. But let's say I want to go, like when I was doing that file, I want a line that goes from this corner to this corner. I can rotate it and get it going, and you see that it gives me that rectangular box, but it won't... It won't let me maneuver it very well. Um, before, I could just unlock it and then stretch this over, and it would line up. And now you can see that it's either too long or it's too short for my area, and I, I keep having to readjust everything to make it work. And if I'm in the new canvas, this is what made me cry. 
If I'm in the new canvas and I try to do that, everything from where it says Cricut Design Space right here down turns completely white. I cannot quit the program. I cannot force quit the program. I can't exit the program. I can't do anything except shut down my computer. I hard shut down I can't because I'm on a Mac and my Mac won't let me shut down because it says Cricut Design Space is open. So those are just a few of the issues that are going on. I don't know what issues you guys are having. I've seen some of them. Some of them are identical to mine. But my handle goes missing all the time. Even on these objects, my handles go missing. They just vanish. So we're, we're just all puddling through it and, and doing the best that we can with it. But that being said, another thing that you may guys may not know, guys, you know there are you know there are more basic shapes than this, right? You you guys are aware of that? You can there, you can get to them a couple of ways, but the easiest way that I have found is come to your layers panel. You can't do this in mobile, but you can right click and go to image info, go to image sets. And here's where your half circle is, your other star. The star is a little bit different. See how much this one's fatter here? You have more of a star. You have a different heart in here. You have your oval shapes, your banner shapes, your ovals. You have more shapes in there. So if you're constantly slicing a circle in half to get a half circle, you don't have to do that. It's over here. Okay? So you can go in and you can get those other basic shapes. And I haven't found the keys, the shortcut, the number keys that work with these yet either. There may not be any. Okay? And when I go to that, an easy way to remember what number is what, if you open this up, Square is one, circles two, triangle three, diamond four, pentagon five, hexagon six, star seven. This is eight on your octagon and nine on your heart. Okay? So just a few tips and tricks for you guys tonight. Can I show that again, Shirley? Which one? The other basic shapes. It's not you, uh, Rusty. It's not. It's not you. It's not any of us. Uh, it, it is design space. It is not. If you get that, can't save, check your internet connection. I don't know why it says check your internet connection. It's not the internet. It's design space. That's just an old message that comes up when it can't save. It used to be your that. How to get the other shapes. Okay. To how to get the other shapes, you can, I'm just going to type in a one and grab my square. You're going to come over to your layers panel and you're going to right click. You're going to go down to your image info, view image sets. And it's going to bring up your, now you can get to it from image sets too by going to projects. And then you can, oops, I'm sorry, images, not projects. Um, I'm just going to go to category. Right down here, image sets, and type in basic, and hit your search, and there they are right there, basic shapes. So a couple of ways to get to them. It's just easier for me to right-click image info and go straight over to the image set from inside the, instead of having to come up here and type all of this. To me, it's just easier to do it from the canvas because it's just like right click and click it, and there I am. So that's just my shortcuts that I use. That's okay. And again, they go in numerical order right to left to right, not right, <laughs> my other right. <laughs> from left to right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
So if I wanted, again, if I wanted a heart and a square, I could type 91, get my heart and my square. If I wanted a heart, a diamond and a circle, it's 42. You can combine them. Um, so you could type two or three keys at once and, and grab the, the shapes that you want. Again, I don't know if anybody figures out what the line number is, please let me know. Okay, so let's go over and put our design together. Uh, you guys will see on the site you have, um, let me just go to my projects, it's going to be easier. You have two. Um, one is with all the pretty decorations in it, one is without, and you will see that on craftingwithaprilco when you go over to get your file, you will see that. Okay, so let's go put it together. And I really love it. I, I did around I did some playing around and added some stuff since I took my photos too. I put me some nouveau glitter drops on there. I don't know if you guys can see that. But I've been playing around and putting some drops and things on there. Just making it pop and making it a little prettier. But it does open up so that you have your happy Valentine's. I did make this print and cut. The one with the um the extras in it has all of the extras welded so that you guys can open them and print and cut or you can open the plain one without anything and put what you want in there. And then we have our little flap that folds down and we got our little kiss in there and it comes out and holds our gift cards. Guys, I don't know if you saw my video on the card now, but I love that card now box. Um, where I ordered all 25 cards and I have them. They don't have any money on them. I put the money on them as I use them. So, awesome deal on that. Check that video out. So, let's get started. I've got all my little pieces separated here. All right. So, the first thing we're going to do is fold the base in half. This is, um, and I got a mark on there, but it doesn't matter. This is inspired by Simon Says. I believe they did this a couple of years ago, guys. But I saw it and I was like, well, I like that, but I want to make a few changes. So I made some changes to the ideas they sparked within me. And I did the draw on this card with Design Space. And I'm just using a black ink pad and a makeup brush and just dabbing a little bit of ink on. I'm gonna knock some of it off. But just very lightly, I just went around the edges of this little card just to give it some definition. Because if I just place it on top of that red, it's not gonna show. You can see how it just blends in. But if I just ink the edges up a little bit, Kind of distress. I don't know if you call it distressing. What you, what you might call it, shading. Just kind of shade the edges just a little bit. And you can do this with the sponge. You don't have to have a makeup brush. Myself, I just feel like I got more control with these makeup brushes since I, I forgot who even started that and I saw it and tried it but I'm liking this better than the sponges. I barely use the sponge anymore. And on my other one I used on my paper hugs piece I used black ink on that one but I didn't really like it as well. I'm gonna use the almond I think. I forgot to get my second sponge. But now that's going to make that pop out just a little bit more so that you can see it.
I hope I got enough black ink off of that that it doesn't because I didn't grab another one. Here's my paper hugs and I did that as a print cut and I've got some almond or light colored ink here. I'm just going to just play on the edges of it just a little bit. You could even use a Copic marker, something like that, on here. You won't have, it won't be as light. Just give your card a little bit more dimension. You don't, you can even skip this step. I just think it gives it a little extra pop. And again, as much or as little as you like. I think that's pretty good. Uh, depends on the ink. Depends on your ink, Rusty. Um, if you've got water-based, you can. Yes, a baby wipe. Um, if you're using pigmented inks, I would suggest you use a a sponge well you could actually use those but you're gonna have to clean them with whatever you would clean your stamps with how would I use the marker I would take my marker I'm just gonna use a pencil to show you I would take my marker and hold my Copic marker and just go around the edges and get some coloring on the edges just like this the longer you hold it there the more your paper will start sucking in some ink so you want to make sure that your go light. I would suggest if you're first time doing it with a um, marker that you um, take a piece of your scrap paper because all paper is different, guys. And some of it's going to sort absorb the ink a lot faster than others will. Like copy paper. Copy paper is going to suck it in really, really, really fast. Where cardstock, you know, may be medium. And it's going to depend on brands of cardstock as well. So make sure that you check those when you're doing it. So I've got all of that done. We're going to start with our card thing. Now I did go in and add some Nouveau Drops and smear it in to, to give me that glitter on my lips. I'm not going to do that with this just because of time purposes. You can get these at scrapbook.com. I think there's a link down below. Um, I used, for this one, I used Ruby Slippers. Now, in the one without any decoration, guys, this piece is an access piece. You can go, it's just a gift card holder. It's, I, I don't remember if I left it in the file or not. I tried to take out anything that you might be required to pay for and leave in the rest. I think I just missed my score line, but it'll be okay. And I'm just giving that ink a little bit of time to set before I start playing with those pieces. I'm just going to run a little bit of glue here to fix my little card holder. I'm just going to seal that shut. Yeah, I got that score line way off. You guys get yours on there like you're supposed to have it on there. I don't know how I did that. I have a quick fix for it. Oops. All done. Fixed. And then your card should still fit in there, April. <laughs> I really, really, really don't know how I did that. Okay. All right. So it does fit. There's plenty of wiggle room in there in case you do the same thing. Let it dry before you put your card in there. And you can either use a little pencil and mark your top or just guesstimate. You want to make sure that you don't get in the way of your card. So I want to glue my little hearts on here. I'm just going to put a little glue across the top. Just 
like so. Then you're going to flip it over and glue it on the back. And that's why you want to put your card in there. You just want to make sure that it's not blocking your image. Once you have that done, don't put anything on the front of that yet. You want to build this up first. And I'm just going to start, I'm going to start with my hinge. This is your hinge piece. It's got a score line on it. Just fold it down the middle. Just like that. And then you're going to, with it like an L shape, you're just going to put your glue right here on the base. And then we're going to slide that right over and center it up right there in that opening. Just like that. Okay. Just going to give it a rub and distribute that glue. I'm just going to fold it down. And guys, don't throw the piece that comes out of there, don't throw that away. I used mine on the back of mine just to help hide where my cards were sitting and you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a minute. So don't throw that piece away. You need that piece. And give it a second to dry. Just going to open it back up. And now we're going to put glue on the front of it. So it's really going on the inside still, but we're going to line this piece up right there in the hole and press it down. Give it a second to dry so you don't pull it back apart when you open it. Okay. And while that's drying, we'll work on this piece. I did pop dot this up with some foam dots. Totally up to you if you want to do that. This would be cute with some brads in it. If you want to do brads, you want to do those before you do this step or before you do the next step at the latest. But I'm just pop dotting that piece up. And I used some extra thick ones for this because of the size of the card. I didn't want to use little bitty dainty ones. It just didn't look right. The thin ones didn't look good to me. If I was mailing, I probably would use the thin ones. I'm just going to line that up. Pop it down. So if you want to do brads, any decorative brads or anything like that, you would do those now before you place that on here. Yeah, you can... I do too, Jamie. I had several. That's why I say I forgot to get my other brush out. But yeah, the ones on Amazon, you get several in the pack. And um, you can you can uh, designate one to each color group. All right. So now I've got my letters. Now you can cut these out of vinyl or, or whatever. You can do print and cut. I just didn't want to do print and cut for one piece and then it not match my cardstock. So I chose to cut my lettering from cardstock and glue them on individually. I know, I'm brave. And I am just eyeballing this, guys. Make sure you get yours evened out and get it on there straight. And I'm just bringing it right down to that line where we it meets, where it folds out. And I'm trying to get them straight. Make sure you get yours on good and straight. 
and that you put your letters on in the right order. And I'm saying that because, yes, I've done that. Don't want those either. There they are. Keep grabbing the wrong ones. Uh, don't be a booger. Get on there. I'm using Art Glitter Glue. It does dry matte and clear, so if I get a little bit on there, it's going to be okay. Unless I'm on a shiny surface, then it's not going to be okay. Okay, so now I've got my lettering on there. Now I'm just going to fold this back. Remember that we had that hinge that was drying. I'm just going to give it a little rub back. And it's going to break itself in and work here soon enough. Okay? And why did I do it this way? Because we don't have that half circle that makes it meet up well enough. And that's the only way I could do it without, I mean, I can do a curved line and sure cuts a lot and then upload it, but then you guys can't open it when I upload load that into there. So if I used it to cut, it would make the file unusable for you guys. So next, I'm just going to kind of come over here and play and arrange with my little print cut envelopes. And on the other one, I did it that way. I'm, I'm just going to kind of do it about the same way. I didn't put my Nuvo drops on these yet because I wanted, in case my hearts were down below that when I did this, trying to make it look like our mailbox is just full, as they said on the inspiration video. Just going to kind of bring that one in. And then I'm going to, I think I'll turn this one this way this time. Just going to get a little glue on the corners, just enough to hold it. That one's going to come through the mail slot there. I think I'll do that one this way. I'm just going to go up on the edge. I'm just adding enough glue to make it hold. So there we have it. And you see how the back of that looks? You can see the hinge. You can see all of the envelopes. I personally didn't like that. Um, so I kept my piece to go on here and sandwich that in so when they open the door, it looked finished. So I'm just going to close it up and place some glue on that piece that cut out of here. And we're going to get it lined up in there. You want to make sure that you get it in there really good. Make sure that it still opens. And that looks a little bit better. Then we're going to get this piece. Important step, guys. You're going to line up your top. And then you're going to place your envelope in there how you want your heart to sit. Here at the top how far you want it, any of that good stuff, just like that. So once you have it like you want it and it's where you want it to be, you're going to flip it over and remove this. Then you're just going to take a pencil oops, 
and kind of mark a line. Okay? Important step because you want your glue to go up to that line and not above it. And then you're going to come around on this piece here. Okay? You don't want to get in the area where your card is going to be. Make sure that you got this facing the right way. And then you're just going to line it up right on top. And give it a second to dry before you start shoving your card in there because you don't want to break that glue loose. You can flip it over this way. I am getting all sorts of glue on this. And just give it a good rub. Okay. How cute is that? And again, that's inspired by Simon Says. I don't know how old that, their file was. I think it was a year, maybe two years old. You ordered Memento Dew Drops to use for shadowing. That That's a good choice. Um, that should work fine. And then you're, of course, going to take your Nouveau Drops and do any, any little bit of glittering and stuff like that you want to do on your hearts. That way you can get it right up to the line of that and not interfere and be lumpy when you try to put it together. Super cute, super easy. And then of course, all I did with this, and I don't have my Q-tip in here, but I just put a little bit on there. I'm just gonna use my finger no, I'm not. My finger won't do good. Let me get a brush. You can use a brush, use a Q-tip, use your finger. And I'm just going to kind of paint it in there. Just to give it some glitz. And this will dry pretty quick, too. Kind of move it around in there. And I'll wash. Make sure if you do that with your brush that you wash your brush out because that is blue. I'll wash mine here in just a second. So super fun and easy, and like I said, now if you want to fold that top over, you can, but I chose not to, and that's why I didn't show that to you guys on this step. If you don't want that heart to be popped up there, you can just omit the heart and glue that down and have the card in there itself. Totally up to you. I liked it up better with that heart at the top. So that is that card yay does anybody have any design space questions anything that we didn't cover something you want to ask something that you need me to go over with you I'm just catching up on what glue goes with metallic paper um, I use art glitter glue for just about everything, uh, Vicki. You can use that Barely glue as well off of Amazon. Um, let's see. The problem is with metallic, if you're glue, if you're a messy gluer like me and you get it on there, it's going to come off. However, and of course mine's covered up on my desk here because I have 10 million things going on. It's called a gum eraser. 
you can get it off sometimes with that, but it depends. If it's a foil, you can chance scratching your foil paper. So you want to be careful when you're doing that with a gum eraser. But that will take it off. I do know that uh, Tonic Studios, which is what I have this my art glitter glue in, Tonic Studios glue um, dries glossy and clear. Um, that will work in case you get a little uh, over there. It'll, it'll be okay. It will dry glossy. Yes, those little envelopes are cute. That, that was in Design Space. That was an access image, but I mean, you guys can lay out your own. It's pretty easy. If you take a look at it, it's just a triangle and a, a square flattened down with some slices out of it. You can make your own. Holographic, yeah, with the holographic, I have used uh, art glitter glue, but you may want to do a where did I put it? I had it right here. I would use one of these. I Guys, I, I got this in one of my kits. And I have tried Tombow. I've tried Scrapbook brand. I've tried um, Hobby Lobby brand. I've tried Elmer's. I've tried um, Stampin' Up! Close to my heart. Uh, I have tried several permanent tape runners and I don't know if it's my cardstock the humidity here what they always pop apart this is the only one and I've recently started using this it doesn't do that and it holds I mean it sticks I don't have to force it so I mean this one is just super sticky compared to the others that I've used I don't know if I've just gotten hold of old product but I mean through the years I've tried them all and I'm telling you, this one is about the best that I've ever used as far as tape runner goes for these minis. It's super, super sticky. So this is this is now my new go-to brand for tape runners. Of course, I'll use up the others that I have where I bought packs of three and packs of six. But yeah, red line tape, that works too. Tearing tape can work. I prefer, my, personally, I prefer tearing tape over red line, uh, but it depends on the project too. It, it just takes, Jamie can probably vouch for it, it just takes time. You will learn what works and what doesn't work. It's going to depend on, not only on your papers, but even like with red line tape, if you do red line tape and then you use it for a 3D project and there's too much stress on that, it will make the red line pop apart. So it, it's, in fact, everything factors in from project to paper choices, what you're gluing it to or adhering it to, um, it, it all factors in. And you find as you go, some things will work, some things won't. Can this be used for uh, handmade envelopes for mailing? Yeah, it may tear them, but yes. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it on there and then try to open it up unless I was ready to mail it. Then I would use this. Um, for that, I would use repositionable if it's something you're going to hand and you want sealed. But if you're mailing, I would use this because you're going to have to seal it up at some point. Nuvo, N-U-V-O. There is a link down below, Gary. It is called Tonic Studios. It should be in the video below. If it's not, as soon as I leave here, I will put it in there. Let me see if I have a link saved. Um, I do. I don't know if it's going to let you get that link, but I did post it in there. 
see if you can click on that. That will take you over. They have a U.S. site and a U.K. site. So if any of you U.K. followers are out there and need it, just switch over to the U.K. But that's where I get this and my Nouveau Drops. So, as a matter of fact, I get their monthly kit because you can't beat it. In their monthly kit, I get paper, I get product, I get dyes, I get notebook. Let me just show you the last one. You get, they send you the binders. I'm going to move this before I mess up my Nuvo drops. There we go. You get binders that will hold X amount. So they get, they send those to you in your kits. You get the binders, so when they start filling up, you get a new binder. Um, then you get the folder for it, okay? In this one, I got all of these dies, my stamps. I got a large bottle of Nuvo Drops. I got a glitter pen. If I can. They send various products. Now, all of this didn't come in one box. This is over the last couple of months, and I just haven't had a chance to use them. But you get your spray drops, your glimmer drops, your mist. You get those occasionally. Sometimes you get a full size. Sometimes you get a mini. Sometimes you get full Nouveau drops. Sometimes you get a mini. Sometimes you get uh, glitter. Like so. Sometimes you get the glacier paste or the mousses that you can use with stenciling. You get all of that and then they send you paper that will complement the project so you can look at their papers and things that they sell. Now you can buy more paper in the packs but for this kit this is like a handmade paper already embossed. Super super pretty. Pearl. Then I've got and these are thick heavy papers guys. This is like a hundred and 10 pound. They, they come in various textures and um, weights. But this is just this last kit. All of these papers came in this last kit. Enough to make two or three cards along with your dies. And it's $39.95. You get, I mean, they send, it, it's a good kit. Like I said, you don't get all of this, but I think I got a pen, a full size Nouveau drop. I think this was the Nouveau drop that I got, but it's going to be in a complimentary color, and I think I got that glitter, and I think I got this. I don't remember exactly what was in this last kit. Sometimes you get stencils, um, but you, you can't beat it. But every month you get, like in this one, this is what came in this one. I got... All of my dies, my stamps, I got a pack of the paper, I got, um, it lists all of the paper here, I got two uh, bottles of glitter, two random colors, I got an aqua shimmer pen, I got washi tape, I got um, glitter drops in honey gold, I got mini glacier paste, I got a Glimmer Accents and Aztec Gold, and then I got my craft wallet and binder because this one came with a binder. So, I mean, super, super, super nice kit. Because if you go on any of these other sites and you look for a die set, and this one may be a box, it may be for envelopes, it may be for different things, um, but they, they have... A lot of really really nice dies if you were to buy this die set alone would cost you at least $30 so 
Tonic Studios has some really nice, nice boxes. All right, if nobody has any other questions, nothing else you need me to cover in design space, then we're going to sign out, and I will catch you guys on next Monday, and then we're going to kick off... Um, our rotation of design space and sure cuts a lot tutorials also if you are not a patreon or if you are a patreon first of all I want to say thank you to all of my supporters Kofi patreon and my YouTube channel members and my moderators you guys are awesome you can switch over if you are monthly on patreon to annual and right now, until the first, it's 16% off. That's the max they'll let me do. And that's like getting two months free. And so if you want to switch over from monthly to annual, now is the time after the February the 1st, because we're celebrating my Patreon anniversary. After that, on the 2nd, it will go to a 5% to subscribe annually uh, discount. So make sure if you want to get in on that annual discount, you do it before February the 2nd. It ends at 11.59 on the 1st, okay, Eastern Time. And it is the easiest, Shirley, because you don't have to worry about it. it it's done. You don't have to worry about that monthly, and you're going to get that password, boom, first of the month. Um, even if Patreon has a, a glitch like they sometimes do, and it, their processor just takes forever to process, we can't send out those passwords till they finish processing. So if you're on annual, boom, you're going to get it on the first of the month, no wait. So super easy. And I've got a couple of other things coming for after I clear my plate of all I've got going on with the resource guide and all of that, I do have a couple of things coming for people who are annual patrons. So I just have to clear off my plate before I can implement that, but it is coming. You're going to have some exclusives. All right. You guys have a wonderful night. Thank you for joining me. Please give a thumbs up and a like on the video. And if you have time, please leave a comment below, hopefully positive. <laughs> you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you on next Monday. Mm.